the granite quarries of Quincy. For more than a century, this high-quality stone was prized by construction engineers. When the mining stopped, the site gained notoriety as a cliff-diving death zone. Most recently, the quarries have metamorphosed yet again, filled with big-dig dirt and transformed into a technicolor dream world. Now a popular park run by the Department of Conservation and Recreation, the quarries still appeal to risk takers. It's a real historic climbing place. People have been climbing here for almost 100 years now. Doug Martland of Milton is a regular here, often coming out to climb after work. The climbing here is unique. The rock quality is actually very good but there's layer upon layer of spray paint that makes for a real interesting climbing experience. Where you'd normally expect friction, there's not. It definitely adds to the challenge. It's the real thing. It is the real thing. Tim Pack, Martland's longtime friend and climbing partner. When you think about rock climbing, you think about uh, like Free Solo and El Cap and this, these pristine walls and... You know. <laughs> Along with graffiti artists, Peck says climbers here have learned to share this natural wonder with Instagrammers, the occasional rap video crew, and other unusual urban challenges. For all the danger of climbing, the, the closest call I ever had here was being hit, almost hit by a golf ball, that someone was, drive, someone was driving balls off the top. Think of America's national parks and what comes to mind. Yellowstone, maybe, Yosemite, or right up here in the Northeast, Acadia National Park in Maine, often overlooked Boston's very own natural wonder, the Boston Harbor Islands. The islands really are a hidden gem, and it's like, sometimes it's like, I can't believe they're still hidden. Susan Kane of the Department of Conservation and Recreation, which co-manages the Harbor Islands with the National Parks and Boston Harbor Now. I would say that at this point, the islands are underutilized and in many cases underappreciated. Uh, I think that because people haven't experienced them or they may have this foggy recollection of taking a, a school field trip out to George's Island when they were in, you know, fifth or sixth grade. And the islands have changed so much since then. There is Little Brewster Island, a tiny granite gumdrop that is home to Boston Light, long manned by lighthouse keeper Sally Snowden. Then there are long stretches of sandy beach on Lovells Island and the camping yurts on paddocks. If you haven't been out there in the last five years or so, you really need to make another trip out there and just experience what they are now and how they're evolving. We decided to do just that, calling an old friend Mike McDevitt. This is my house right there, right in under the trees. McDevitt could have written the book on social distancing. He lives with his wife year round on Pettix Island, off the town of Hull, in the house he grew up in. We heat by wood, propane, stove, refrigerator. It's living off the grid. As a kid, the Harbor Islands were McDevitt's backyard. He agrees to take us on a little tour of his neighborhood. First up, the tiny rock known as Nix's Mate, named after a crewman accused of killing a Captain Nix. So they brought him out to this island, and one of the last things he said before they hung him here, he says, if I'm not guilty, this island will wash away. The island, once 11 acres, has apparently issued its judgment. The island's not there anymore, so the rumor is he was not guilty. Next stop, Spectacle Island. Now a rolling stretch of open meadows with million dollar views of the city. McDevitt played here as a kid when it was a toxic dump. It was all cliffs of trash, but it was beautiful because when the waves would hit the, the cliffs of trash, you'd all you hear is glass clinkling in the waves. And, you, and if you would pick around, we'd find little coins and stuff. It was kind of cool. It was fun when we were kids. Of course, when he'd motor home to Pettix, his mother was a bit less enthusiastic. When we come home, she knew we were, we were on spectacle because we smelled like spectacle. <laughs> McDevitt not only lives in the middle of Boston Harbor, he makes his living here too, as a tugboat operator based out of Hall. He's happy to see more people discovering his briny backyard, this true son 
of the Harbor Islands. My parents started back in the 50s and uh, it was handed on to us and we're keeping it going. So it's a heritage and uh, it, it feels like these islands are part of us and we're part of these islands. Mike McDivitt is a Harbor Island guy through and through. In fact, his tug company played a key role in transforming Spectacle Island to the natural wonder it is today. The secret ingredient, big dig dirt, which his boats helped transport to Spectacle. The dirt was used to cap the old dump and reshape the island. Coming up, when dinosaurs roamed the Bay State.